<laughs> and also, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We're going to move on now to going around the league. Yeah, because there's uh, more of the NHL besides just us. Anthony, I'm not sure who to take number one overall. Um, is there is there a player that really jumps out at you that you would take if you had the first pick in the draft? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm really I'm really liking this uh, this kid from from Russia. I believe his name is Sergey Fedorov. I think he's supposed to be pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah, Sergey Fedorov. Yeah, um, I mean. Him. I mean, there was this other guy uh, uh, from uh, Sweden, I think it was, or maybe even uh, Finland, uh, Ray edwards I thought about taking him number one overall. We're joking, folks. It's obviously McDavid. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so going right going right to, down to business, after Connor McDavid, who is the rest of your top five that you would go with? Um, I would – I go I go Nathan McKinnon. Um, Leon Dreisaitl, uh, Austin Matthews, um, on probably, honestly, probably Andre Vasilevsky. Um, and then, I mean, may, I might, you know, I might, I might go with, I mean, cause te- technically speaking, then that would be Panarin at six if you're not counting McDavid at one. So maybe, maybe Artemi Panarin, um, you know, there's one guy you're missing. And I'm going to mention him in a second. Uh, who am I? Wh- well, I, I had him two years ago or three years ago in his MVP season. But Nikita Kucherov had oh, yeah. Kucherov. Nikita yeah. Kucherov had more power play points than uh, the more than I think it was five teams had point leaders. Yeah. We had more power play points than teams. So, uh, but that's assuming Tampa Bay can be Tampa Bay again. Um, that's where the hard part is. I, I the Yahoo rankings. I'm gonna go with theirs first. McDavid, Kucherov, McKinnon, Drysaitel, and then Brad Marchand. Yeah, Mar- I I could go honestly McDavid, uh, Kucherov, and then Drysaitel. Then uh, I'd go McKinnon. And then I go Matthews at five. Yeah. Um, and wow, Miko ranted it all the way up to number seven in the Yahoo draft mm-hmm. rankings. So how about that? Um, but yeah, because the reason why you forgot is because he didn't play last year, except <laughs> for in the Stanley Cup playoffs. That didn't have any effect on the on the league or anything, did it? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah. No, no. So... Um, <laughs> What's what's a player you could think of that the, his stock just is rising and rising and rising? I think Cal McCarr. Okay. Yeah, I think Cal McCarr um, is really good. I know he's already broken out, I guess you could say, but I, I really think he's going to unleash himself on the rest of the league. Um, you know, that, that Colorado team is a juggernaut offensively uh, and the way he skates and always jumps into the play. Um, he's my he's my pick for the right now to win the Norris Trophy um, and lead all defensemen in points. Uh, I just think he's he's a he's an unreal talent on the back end. Um, he's like a galloping horse when he skates and just the way he the way he stick handles and moves laterally for a defenseman. It's uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, I'm going to go Jonathan Huberto. I think this year you're really going to see some A plus production out of him and Alexander Barkov, and um, I think they even might have Sam Reinhart on their on their other wing. You might see an explosion out of Florida this year. Yeah. That's that's what I mean. You're talking about, and there's some good late round value. We're going to go more into that in a minute. Um, but it's just as far as they go, they they can be a real a real good team. So. Uh, I would I would go with uh, Huberdo. I think we got the same guy, both of us, for whose players' stock is falling. Actually, we may not. We'll, we'll uh, I'll I'll see if I can switch it up for us just for our viewers. Hey, you go first. I'll go Jack Eichel. Jack Eichel is persona non grata. Jack Eichel would be a first or a first round draft pick in this. And I don't want any part of him this entire season. Yeah. Uh, if you're telling me I could draft him in the 16th round, 
I'd still wonder if I'm wasting a roster spot. I mean, that's that's really hard to argue, but I'll, I'll go Brady Kachuk. Um, doesn't seem like it's particularly close um, with him in Ottawa. And the longer, you know, the longer you miss camp in the beginning of this you know, preseason and, you know, maybe even the beginning of the regular season, it becomes hard for you to catch up to everybody else when they're in, you know, midseason form. You're still like in training camp mode. So um, he's a guy that I would I would avoid right now just because you don't know when he's going to when he's going to sign and, you know, how much time he misses. And then when he does sign, you know, how how he's going to be once he gets going. So if you missed our show last week, Anthony and I discussed RFAs that could potentially miss time two weeks ago. Oh, it was two weeks. It was last week, wasn't it? Well, this week's show was technically ready. Yeah, I guess it was last well, week. It was still actually. seven days. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so what we met, what we all said was we kind of had the consensus Kirill Kaprizov was going to miss time. Yeah, yep. It's looking like it's going to be Brady Kachuk. And as far as fantasy owners are concerned, I had William Nylander the year he held out. Mm. Don't. Don't <laughs> take a guy that holds out. Generally speaking, it never works out for anyone involved. It doesn't work out for the team. It doesn't work out for the player. It doesn't work out for fantasy owners. So avoid all those guys and holding out. And um, yeah, it's just uh, it's just like that. Uh, by the way, while we're on this, I guess we're going to have to talk about two other guys whose stocks are dropping rapidly: Elias Pettersson and Quinn Hughes. Yeah, if, if they're missing time, the, you you can't touch these guys in the first five rounds. Yeah, it seems like um, I would guess that they signed before Kachuk, but you never know, honestly. It really, it, it's really too up in the air. But um, all, all the stuff I read today was that Jim Benning is, you know, confident that they're going to get signed, and it's not going to be a problem going forward. But I guess we're going to have, I guess we're going to have to see. Um, you know, I, I think at this point, Pedersen sees what Kaprizov got, um, and. I don't know if Vancouver can afford to pay him nine million and Quinn Hughes eight right now. So they're in a tough spot, but I do think they both get done uh, before Kachuk. Okay. Draft these three Norris trophy finalists in order. McCarr, Hedman, and Fox. Well, you just you know what I talked about McCarr, I, I what I said about him. So So we know number one is gonna be uh, McCarr. McCarr, Fox, and then Hedman. Um, but you know, any, listen, you could put any of these guys, number one. Um, but I, I go Fox ahead of Hedman just cause Hedman is coming off an uh, injury. I know he's, you know, he, he should be okay, but you know, he's played a lot of hockey the last two years and went back to back cups that, that takes a toll on you physically and mentally. Um, you know, and obviously Adam Fox had a phenomenal year last year. Um, so you really can't go wrong. That's it with Tom Wilson. Um, you really can't <laughs> go wrong with, um, with either in any order, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident uh, with McCarr Fox Hedman. I mean, uh, I, I got to agree with you. I think this is the year McCarr breaks out, but that he seems always kind of get a little bit hit by that injury bug. Uh, Adam Fox is always healthy. I think there's going to be a lot of doubters that are going to doubt him and knock him down a little bit. I would actually go, but I put my faith in uh, in in McCarr with that absolutely outstanding offensive team. So I'd probably go McCarr, Fox, and then Hedman in that order. Um, there were times where I've gotten Hedman as early as late as the fourth round. Yeah, and there's there's times where I've gotten him earlier. So it uh, it all depends. Uh, my- <laughs> who, who, makes, uh, who makes your team there, Mark? <laughs> Uh, well, first things first, uh, I would say the hottest mm-hmm. hockey player that I know is right here. Wow. Um, <laughs> actually, I just I just sprung uh, on a brand new stick today. So hopefully there's some magic in that and not, you know, the crap that's been in my sticks in the last couple games. Uh, <laughs> so that's not true. Just the last game. The, the game before that, I had a couple strong games. Um, five, what are just some rookies you're kind of looking at? <laughs> Hold on. There's All right, go ahead. Malkin. I think Malkin would cap. <laughs> yeah, he's he's as, he's about as hot as Mister Red. Um, yeah, I mean, you could put the bolts in Malkin's neck and immediately call him Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, that's. Um, I think I'm not. I think listen, I'm a, I'm a 
you know, straight as an arrow. But if Roman Yossi, that he's a he's a very <laughs> handsome man. He would he would captain a a, a hot guy team. Yeah, you know. You know, not not for nothing. Uh, hockey usually has uh, some of the better looking athletes. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't believe me, let me just remind you: Carrie Underwood sings the song for the most watched program in America every single week, yeah. and it's only for about uh, twenty weeks that she does it for that. She married a hockey player. My Keep kid. that in mind, everybody. Yeah. So, Carrie, Carrie Underwood is very uh, easy to look at too. Yeah, and also, you know, very talented. We, yep. we, we can also say that, too. Yep. It's okay. We don't have to be pigs the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what are some of the rookies that you're looking at? Well, you got to go with the first one, obvious, how he performed in the playoffs, Gold Caulfield. Um, you know, I think he I think he's really going to take off. Um, Quinton Byfield, who was my pick for the, for the Calder, um, you got to look at him. Uh, then you got to uh, – <sighs> Um, Vasi Pol- uh, Pol- uh, I'm like pulling a mark right now. Vasilevsky Podoliskin, or Pol- I can't his weird Russian name. I'm pronouncing it in Vancouver. Okay, uh, Podzolkin. Um, I think he. I think he can really. I think he can really break out uh, for Vancouver. Um, you know, Nedeljkovic, I believe, still has rookie status um, for Detroit, and he was a Calder finalist as it is last last season. So. Um, you know, look look for him to improve upon a, gr- a great rookie year. Um, then you have, you know, Trevor Zegris in Anaheim, Drysdale. Um, so this year's rookie class, even though it's not going <laughs> to – thanks, Stephen. I appreciate <laughs> um, it. Even though this year's rookie class doesn't have any of the guys drafted um, from this year in the top five playing um, – I think it's going to be a good class, uh, but Caulfield's at the top of the list for me, uh, and Byfield. But again, don't don't be surprised if you know Trevor Zegers, um, you know, can steal Rookie of the Year. Um, he's really talented, um, but those are the main guys that I would keep your eyes on for this coming season. Um, I would say uh, obviously Zegers. Um... And uh, just adding on to your list, uh, the one guy you didn't mention, Moritz Sider uh, yes. in Detroit. Yes, yes. And a matter of fact, there we go. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to be mentioning his name in another minute. My, but, problem, uh, my problem with him, though, is he's going to play in a bad Detroit team. Um, yeah, he's going to get a lot of minutes. But that that concerns me. I, I don't I don't know if I would take him on my fantasy team. Well, that's where I think um, that's where you can find the, the some of these hidden gems. Uh, four years ago, I think it was, I got I had Thomas Shabbat. And I got him in the 15th round or something ridiculous and might have been the 14th. And he ended up being the, the leading defenseman in scoring that year. Yeah, I had the sacrifice on plus minus, but I had other guys that were generating plus minus. Yeah. Although just for full disclosure, I had... Uh, eight picks in the top five rounds that year. So uh, it was kind of a little bit easier to draft the bottom five when you have your, some of those really high ones. That's what happens when you play dynasty leagues. You may make a lot of trades (laughs) after that. My friends were like, Nope, never again. We're not doing that. All right. Um, Going from strategy though, other than Vasilevsky, how long do you usually hold out before you get a goalie? Because as I was mentioning with, uh, with quarterbacks, Usually in NFL in NFL fantasy drafts, usually you go in maybe Pat Mahomes, maybe uh, Russell Wilson. Uh, there's Kyler like a handful Murray. of guys you would take before the third round. I got I got Kyler Murray in the in the third round. Oh, nice. Okay, good. And he's been a beast. Yeah. So far. But how long do you usually hold out before you start drafting your goalies? Again, I, I think a lot of it depends on the trend. You know, all it takes is one guy to, to take a goalie and then some others start to follow because you panic. You'd be like, oh, I don't want to get shut out with the, without getting an elite goalie. And it happens in fantasy football. Um, so I would I would try to, to hold out, you know, until – obviously Vasilevsky is an exception. He's like a top five pick. Um, but after Vasilevsky, I would maybe try to go to the, the, the fourth round maybe. Mm-hmm. Before I take a goalie. 
You just gave me a bad flashback, hence the eye roll that I had right there. Because <laughs> it was just because it always happens in every single draft. Somebody reaches too too high, too fast. I think Igor Sisterkin went in the fifth round last year. And I'm going, oh, oh, that's, yeah. that's too high. And then immediately guys are flying off the board. Yeah. And then it affects your draft plans. Hey, quick question for you, Anthony. What's a goal you don't think I I I absolutely do not want on my team? <laughs> Tristan Jari. Well, actually, you know what? Now it's Tristan Jari. <laughs> but uh, last year, Carey Price. I took him in the fifth round. Oh. Holy crap. It was that a <laughs> terrible pick. So he, had, he had one of the worst seasons of his career. So yeah. I, I have extra reason to just fuel this fire. And I just, oh, carry. And um, checking in on some of the comments. Yes, by the way, some of the some, uh, following prospects are very useful. And uh, uh, yeah, Detroit's got a lot of them that are all coming up. Uh, now, just really quick on this one. Uh, okay. Well, I thought you were talking about Lung, Henry Glundquist back 15 years ago. But uh, I, it's possible that Lundquist could take a run at it, but he's going to have to get number one power play time in order to do it. And not many guys do that without um, getting the power play time. New Hook, Cider, Lundquist, Zegers, and Caulfield, all from our friend Statboy Steven. Uh which I'm told now he, he has to start charging for a podcast appearance. <laughs> <laughs> I still I still don't understand what that bird was saying. Uh yeah, but I agree with you. You gotta you gotta hold out because after the fifth round, most of your goalies are all the same. Yeah. And you can get guys that fall a little bit more. I think in my draft that I had over here, I, I reached and I took Robin Letter in the third round. Yeah. That worked out for me well last year. <laughs> so uh, if, if you, again, take the guarantees, don't, don't reach for no reason. Um, are there any teams, divisions, conference, or however you want to say, uh, that you're, you're looking at those guys and you go, I don't want any part of the, anybody on those, on those teams. Um, divisions, no teams. Um, I mean, Arizona's, I don't really think they have a great fantasy player. I mean, Phil Kessel and Clay. Well, actually, you know, Jacob Chikrin, I, I would I would take. I think he's a, actually a really good defenseman. Um, again, it's just plus minus being that he's on a bad team that that could be concerning. Um, but yeah, I would I would try to stay away from from Arizona, uh, Buffalo. Those are those are the two and, and Detroit to an extent as well. Um, but other than that, I, I, really, I don't really care what division a team plays in. Um, but so, yeah. Uh, yeah, because you know what? We're not going to have the the no defense Canadian division this year. Yeah. That's the reason why the words or divisions that you'd ever want to go with. I Although I do have to say, if I'm drafting people, I might target guys in the West in, um, say, uh, Edmonton, Vancouver, uh not Seattle. Seattle's going to have trouble scoring goals. A Vegas, especially mm -hmm. like Max Pacioretty and Mark Stone, because they're going to be playing against some bottom feeders. They're going to be play playing against the Tampa, uh, uh, almost at Tampa Bay. Jeez, they're going to be playing against um, the Anaheim Ducks, who are tanking. Yeah, they're going to be playing against the LA Kings, who are rebuilding. They're going to play against the San Jose Sharks, who don't know that they're tanking. Um, and I mean, Seattle might be decent, but I really don't know where their goal scoring is going to come from. And then you also got uh, the Canucks, whose defense is we've already outlined that they've got their issues. And mm -hmm. who knows? I mean, Travis Green might be on the chopping block in midseason, so they could be struggling too. And then, of course, there's the Edmonton Oilers, who are trusting their goaltending to uh, uh, Mike Smith, uh, Koskinen and a 42-year-old uh, Mike Smith. Mike Smith, one year younger than me. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand the decision to go back with that tandem. I really, I really yeah. don't. It's uh, well, you know, Ken Holland's got a, got a oiler's got oil. Am I right? <laughs> right. That's, that's, that's where we're right, right, right like that. Uh, a player that could bring you some the most value. You think? Hmm. Most value. I mean. 
I, I, I mean, I guess maybe may, he's getting older, but maybe Patrice Bergeron. Because okay. he's, he's gonna get he's gonna get you shorthanded goals. Um, he's gonna get you points in the faceoff circle. Um, he's gonna get you goals and points. I'll get you power play points. Um, so I mean, that's because you could say McDavid, but you know, obviously he's the best player in the league. But when it comes to you know you know faceoffs and hits and all that type, shorthanded points, all that stuff. Um, there are better option. What other better option is there? Bergeron, who who's not an elite scorer, but you know he's a guy that could get you sixty to sixty to maybe seventy points. Um, and like I said, bring bring it in the faceoff circle, the plus minus, shorthanded points, and all that. Uh, I gotta just look him up right here just to see where he's at because I could see him going incredibly well. Patrice Bergeron down at, at number 46. Do you know his his line mates are ranked number five by Yahoo mm-hmm. and number nine? Yeah. That's a lot, a yeah. lot of value you can get with a guy that's going to be drafted that low. And the yeah. funny thing is I could see him even going down even lower. Yeah. Um, I think there I think there might be value in, say, a Ryan Strom late in the draft uh, if he's still getting number one power play time. Mm-hmm. And uh, you might be able to get value out of you, you got to be able to get value out of Kako, a couple Kako right now. Um, I think there's going to be lots of value out of Moritz Sider. As long as people don't reach for him, yeah. he, he's going to be a, a hell of a player. You're going to get a lot of guys out of Detroit. Tyler Bertuzzi, although we have breaking news on him. Yes. He is not vaccinated and will not play in Canada whatsoever. So that's he, that means he's missing at least we said it before 10 games. Yeah, first I calculated it wrong because obviously they do home. So, you know, they're going to play Toronto, Montreal, um, and Ottawa twice in Canada. So that's six games right there. And then mm-hmm. against the Western Conference Canadian team. So, yeah, that's about that's about 10. Yeah, well, you got Winnipeg, Calgary, um, uh, Vancouver, and Edmonton. So there you go. Yeah. Um, but by the way, I'm going to go right back to this. What's one player that most people are going to reach too far for? Uh, I think it's going to be Igor Sisterkin again. I think everybody's going to think this guy is going to break out. There's a lot of uh, fantasy pundits that are trying to say that he's that he's this is the year he's going to do it. And the one thing Ranger fans have kind of seen so far is that Igor's had trouble being healthy. Granted, one year was a car crash. You can't really go with that. And the other one is his groin that happened last year, but yeah, he's got yeah, yeah, he's got a he's got a great save percentage. His save percentage just in the, the month of February, which translates uh, probably to December or mid January this year, mm-hmm. um, is oh is usually around nine thirty or something like that. It's something ridiculous. So, uh, I saw goalie rankings the other day, and I. I... I, I couldn't remember. I know Sorokin was ranked eighth, and I'm pretty sure Shosturkin was two ahead of him. I think he was six, and then Varlam and then Varlamov was ahead of Shosturkin. I think in the top three or so, if I remember correctly. Um, Preseason, yeah. I think that's too high to put Sorokin. He was eight. The way I saw, he was listed at eight. Yeah, uh, that's too high to put Sorokin. I think in the preseason. We'll see. We'll, we'll check in with me in January about that. Uh, so, who do you think a guy's going to reach for? Um, I think a lot of well, listen. A lot of Ranger fans love Adam Fox, and and rightfully so. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and of course, Oilers got oil. He's 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 fantastic. Um, but I think some Ranger fans might take him hot, real high, just because they like him so much. And nothing wrong with it, but. I think that's going to happen with a lot of Ranger fans. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, we're going to get those, those guys that you just, you look at and go, Oh, what do you, what are you doing? And as soon as, as <laughs> soon as somebody starts every, uh, so I guess, let me, let me type this up as a question for you. Um, Okay, here we go. What fantasy draft trend do you just despise? 
like every time it happens, you're just you're just rolling your eyes as soon as it happens. Like just me just now, I just dropped my pen. But uh, so I roll my eyes about it. Usually the goalie rush is is the one thing I can't stand. And then the sleeper rush is uh, the next one. I I think, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think um, I hate the trend of, of trying to essentially be the smartest guy in the room, like overthink it. Um, not my fantasy league, but my my brother in laws um said that someone took Saquon first. And it's like, what are you like, what are you what are you trying to do? Like again, you're trying to get too cute, you're trying to think like, oh, you know, like I said, you're the smartest guy in the room. Oh, you think he's healthy now, he's gonna be the best. And it's just no, some sometimes just don't overthink it. If you have the number one pick, just take Connor McDavid. Don't take, you know, don't take Nathan McKinnon because you know you think he's just gonna you know, bust out, like, just, just, just play, just play it safe. Right. Like hockey in general doesn't exactly go with the, um, the same, uh, like weird rankings. Like their rankings have been usually pretty fair. Uh, I remember in baseball for, uh, a better part of five, six years, every single ranking always had Hanley Ramirez being the number one ranked player. Yeah. And I always rolled my eyes. I went, I'm taking Albert Pools. They're like, well, what do you mean? Uh, Haley Ramirez. I'm like, I've had Haley Ramirez. He's not as good as what people are projecting. And it's, again, they're, they're, they're a lot more fair about where the rankings are. Um, well, how many other, how many other seasons with the ranking, uh, picking the Norris winner I, I, be a not- mistake? That's not what I said. I said I think the fans are gonna just take them too high just because they like them so much because they're they're thinking with their with their heart, you know, their favorite team. They're not necessarily, you know. And again, and again, I was saying he's gonna drop to the third round, or at least he should. Yeah. You're gonna draft Sidney Crosby ahead of Adam Fox. Yeah, you got um, him. There's, there's, no, uh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, there's a lot of those guys that are gonna go ahead of him. A matter of fact, just looking down right here. Oh, gee, how low do they rank him on on this Yahoo one? Um, what does the fox say? Somebody actually played. They rank him at seventy three. Holy crap! Really, Yahoo? <laughs> I understand fantasy is different than reality, yeah, but seventy three. That's that's the thing about it. Like as good as he is, there's there's so many forwards who are gonna get you a lot more points. And over more overall value to your fantasy team. That That's is that is correct. But Yahoo's got Dougie Hamilton at 33, Victor Hedman at 40, Kale McCarr at 43, Darnell Nurse, Roman Yossi, and then Adam Fox. I don't know about Darnell Nurse having 17 goals again. Um, yeah, I don't I don't I wouldn't bank on Nurse getting 17 goals again mm-hmm. either. Jacob Chikrin's uh, down at 125, and the thing I'll tell you about that is his um, his uh, his shooting percentage is going to go down, but I think his shots are going to go up. Yeah, that's why I think that's that's why he I think he's going to yeah. be just fine. But I I mean, like Other than the fact that he plays for Arizona, um, and sometimes, I have- but that's where you could get a guy that's just yeah. really good on a bad team. Speaking of Arizona, I love that they brought back the uh, white Kashina jersey. They, they went yeah. back to the logo um, permanently. That's a beautiful, <laughs> that's a beautiful jersey. Ariana, you're right about that, but I mean, he hands McDavid the he he gives a drop pass to McDavid. He goes coast yeah. to coast. <laughs> um, but uh, if you want to look at a guy that's going to give you some good value, going back to the other one, Neil Pionk at 120. Yeah. Uh, He'll, he'll climb a little bit in that as well. I mean, hell, you got you get good defensemen that they're not even meant that aren't even mentioning yet. Um, but yeah, their their rankings are uh, as to say in Yiddish a little fakakta. So, um, <laughs> all right, if I mispronounced it, which I probably did, let's be honest, I'm I'm actually pretty decent with pronouncing it, pronoun- pronunciation. <laughs> um, hey, how's it going, Poppy? Um. But I mean, it's it's when you see when you start seeing that trend, how do you not resist? All right, I gotta go get my goalie now. Yeah, 
and or I got to get this this guy that uh, I was like, if I got more at cider, I'm expecting him in the twelfth round, and then somebody reaches <laughs> up and gets him at eight, or they start picking uh Quentin Byfield around then. You go, no, oh, no, all right. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.